Well, week five was tough for TSM and CLG fans, and we've got a lot of movement around the top half of the NA standing. So let's check out the power rankings after week five in North America. And it's Echo Fox reclaiming that top spot after they, uh, I don't want to say manhandled, but handled Cloud9 in their second matchup. And there, they got the 2-0 tiebreaker over Cloud9. That's their only two losses on the split is to Echo Fox. A lot of that due to that Lucian top uh, picked by Licorice, who got absolutely camped by Dardock. But I mean, there's no way you can't put Echo Fox as your number one right now. They've shown they can win from any lane. Huni and Phoenix have been dominant throughout the laning phase. And Alltech and Adrian, they don't need a gank to at least go even or a lot of the times win that bottom lane. So Echo Fox is a scary team. We'll see what they're actually like in a best of series. Might be a totally different looking squad. Cloud9. Yeah, they lost to Echo Fox second straight time. And again, it wasn't that close, but Cloud9 is still a super solid team. And I'm pretty, I would have loved to have seen that series go to a best of three because that one was just kind of lost with that top lane matchup because yeah, maybe Licorice overextended a few times and that's why Dardock was able to get those ganks off. But I mean, in a best of series, I might still favor Cloud9 in that matchup. But uh, that was a great game and it's a great series whenever those guys play. Uh, Clutch Gaming moves into the top three after another 2-0 week. They have won four in a row now. Uh, they looked, listen, when they beat TSM last week, it was like, all right, that was pretty lucky. Apollo stole literally everything on the map with Ezreal, but uh, into, into their second matchup in week five, it was just clean from Clutch. Uh, I mean, it was never in doubt. It took them a, a little longer maybe than you would have liked to close out that game, but that game was never really in doubt against TSM. Uh, Lyra's looking better. Uh, his Skarner is much improved, and anytime you can get him on this Kha'Zix. I wanna see more Kha'Zix, more potentially carry-oriented junglers for him. I know it's not the meta. I know he did an interview where his team wants him to play more uh, teamfight-oriented junglers, which basically means you can't play carries. Go play Sejuani or Jarvan or Zac every single game. Uh, but he's looking much better for Clutch. And Febivin is still a top tier mid laner. Apollo and Hakuo had a great week. And Solo's a guy who's overperforming still. So Clutch all the way up to third. Uh, Team Liquid drops down to number four. And I mean, when you lose to the Golden Guardians, it's pretty much a guarantee you're gonna move down uh, in the standings. Liquid's lucky to only move down to number four. And the main reason that is is because the teams below them just aren't that good. They're not good enough to warrant putting Liquid uh, below them. But I mean, there's still, there's a lot of question marks that are kind of arising for Liquid. They've now lost uh, three of their last four after having a great start to the league. Double of's positioning is kind of getting into question again. He had some questionable uh, rocket jumps on the Tristana uh, this week. And Impact's a guy who's maybe struggling a little more than people would have thought in that top lane. Uh, 100 Thieves, they move up three spots to number five, which is a little ridiculous in my mind. And I, I don't think they're actually deserving of this. I don't think they played well enough alone on their play to move up three spots. It's more so the next teams below them just weren't that good or weren't good enough. I would, I'd love to put 100 Thieves below a couple of these guys, but I mean, they had a bit of a clown fiesta against CLG. That, that didn't look great. They've also lost three of four. They have the highest average game time in the league. They clearly don't really know how to close out a lot of these games. And I don't think, I don't know if they're gonna be a playoff squad going forward, but for right now, we got them in at fifth. Uh, FlyQuest comes in at number six. They were, they were a few Nexus hits away from losing their matchup to Optic. That was their only win on the week. I still don't know why they're subbing out Stunt at all. Stunt should be starting every single game. I mean, this guy's kill, part kill participation is around 85%. The team clearly looks better with him in the lineup. So just start Stunt. No more of this roster swap with JJ coming in. Uh, I mean, you've settled on Anda, it looks like in the jungle, and Fly in the mid lane, who, by the way, didn't have a great week. He looked a little questionable at times. I I'm not convinced with his Vladimir play uh, out of that mid lane. That did not look so good. So FlyQuest stays put at number six. TSM! <sighs> he thought the climb was beginning. They were slowly working their way up the standings. Got up to fourth last week. 
but now they come plummeting down after another 0-2 week. I mean, they're getting early leads. You saw some proactive, aggressive play against that Cloud9 matchup that got him a lead early. Mike Young had some great ganks, but uh, mid to late game, they just don't seem to know what to do or they're just doing the wrong move in a macro kind of sense and just moving around the map. What to prioritize objective-wise. They just look lost in the mid to late game. I guess they're still implementing Miffy into that shot calling role, but whew, they do not look good there. By the way, Mike Young, 30 deaths, tied for the most in the league uh, with high Golden Guardians. And uh, that's that's not a stat you want to have. He's His Skarner play does not look that great. And I mean, a lot of these teams are just countering Skarner when you have, everyone's building QSS. Uh, when the other team has Garner. I think in the Cloud9 game, it was like three or four Quicksilver Sashes and then a Banshee's Veil. So, I mean, who are you supposed to ult as the Skarner? But uh, Team Solo mid, you thought they were getting out of the gutter, but they're not. They're back down to seventh, so uh, they, they still got a whole lot of work to do. Again, if they get into playoffs, and I am quite certain they'll be playing in playoffs, I'd still be scared to face them in a best of series. Uh, Optic. Actually almost had a 2-0 week. They had a pretty easy schedule. Again, they had a very good chance of winning that FlyQuest game. Uh, more Draven for Arrow, uh, who, by the way, has had a pretty solid split so far. Him and Power of Evil. Man, I felt so bad for PoE in that FlyQuest game. He had a fantastic performance on the Syndra. Almost single-handedly won them that game. And then, ugh, like three or four auto attacks away from winning that game. Uh, Zig is... Zig's numbers are far and away the worst among all top laners. But uh, I mean, even though it was an easy schedule, FlyQuest or Optic almost go 2 0, so they're up one spot to number eight. And look who's coming in at number nine Counter Logic Gaming. Another week, another 0 2 performance for CLG. It's, it's a little mind blowing that this is the only team to hand Echo Fox a loss. I mean, they looked great in that Echo Fox game. Yeah, they threw a little bit, but. They look great there. Other than that, they've looked pretty bad in most games. Uh, they have good early games. Rainover has the highest first blood percentage in the league, but they have the worst numbers when it comes to the mid and late game. After 15 minutes, they look totally lost. I don't know how much of that is not having Aphromu in the lineup, but they really don't look that good at all. And I was almost tempted. I was tempted to put the Golden Guardians above CLG after they got their big win against Liquid. And yet another revenge game. Lorlo gets revenge against his former squad. And they actually don't look that bad. Contracts is looking better when he gets these champions like Camille or even the Jax. And Lorlo, I mean, he's playing Alawi. He's playing a lot of different top laners. So Golden Guardians, they're, they're looking a lot better. And they got their second win on the season. I thought they might only end up with two wins on the split, but it looks like they're gonna be doing uh, much better than that. But if CLG doesn't get things sorted out, the Guardians are definitely gonna be passing them in these power rankings. If CLG puts up another week like they just did, Golden Guardians are coming out of 10th for the very first time in spring. Uh, but just like that, five weeks are gone through in the NALCS and the EU LCS. So there's only four weeks left and I expect there to still be some uh, movement going forward uh, in those power rankings, but it's pretty clear that Echo Fox and Cloud9 are in a league of their own right now. We'll see if any of these other teams can catch up to those guys going forward. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.